The if function runs a logical test and returns one value for a true result and another for a false result. In this video, you will learn how to use the basic if function, test more than one condition with a nested if or an alternate if as function, combine the if function with other functions as well as logical operators, and make sure to watch this video till the end to not miss out on the bonus we've prepared for you. I promise that will make your work with data more efficient. Before jumping into our first example, let's break down the if function syntax real quickly. It consists of three arguments separated with the commas. The condition we want to test, this must be a logical expression, the value to show if the test is true, and the value to return if our logical expression is false. By the way, the false argument is optional, so you may skip that one. Let's start with a very basic if function example. We're going to be using a sample dataset to practice on. We have price packaging weight, and shipping destination. Based on that, I want to figure out and then fill the other columns that we have here. To find the type of shipping based on each parcel's destination, I will set my criteria to mark the US order it says domestic and the rest as international. So I'm starting typing my formula with the if and opening the parentheses. Our logical expression would refer to this cell right here. So if it says the US, we want the function to return this first true value that says domestic. Make sure to enclose everything in quotes, comma, and as for the false value, if it is not the US, it will return international. Now close the parentheses and hit enter. It is crucial to enter our arguments following this particular order. True result first and then the false result. Otherwise, we would just mess things up and get the opposite of what we want. We now see that this cell we referred to contains the US, and the one in front of it states it is a domestic shipping. Now that we are sure our function works the way we want it to, just double click on the lower right corner of the cell to autofill the rest of the column. By the way, if everything looks clear and you're liking this video so far, please let me know by giving it a huge thumbs up and subscribing to this channel to not miss out on our new videos. That was pretty simple, wasn't it? Now let's jump into some more advanced examples, like using a different formula as an argument to our if function. I want to calculate the text values in this column, considering it is only applied to international orders and makes 5% of the product's price. We'll be using the same syntax here. Select the first cell in the text column, type in equals, open the parentheses. To start off, we want to test whether cells in this column contain the word international. So we enter the cell reference equals international and close in quotes. If that is true, our text column will display a product's cost multiplied by 5%. And as for the domestic shipping, we are telling the function to return zero. Close the parentheses, and I'm just dragging down the cell to calculate taxes for all of our international orders. The same way we just did, feel free to use other formulas anywhere inside of the if function. It could also be a part of a logical test. You can extend your logical test by either adding or multiplying several expressions in the first place. As for the OR logic, in order to meet any of the given conditions, simply add one expression to another. Yet for the N logic, where you want to match all of the given conditions, multiply those using an asterisk. To see this in action, let's go back to our previous formula. And just add an extra condition by applying taxes to international orders over $500. So we will enhance our first argument, the logical expression, with the N logic. Now click on this cell, and close our existing test into the parentheses, add an asterisk, open the new parentheses, and now refer to the cell right here in the price column. This one should be greater than $500 to meet our criteria. Close the parentheses and hit enter. Once again, we are using an asterisk along with the end logic here because we are applying taxes only to those items that are shipped internationally and where the price is higher than $500. We want the order to meet more than one condition at the same time, hence opt for the end logic multiplying both of them. And last but not least, drag this new formula down. 
You see that we get no tax in this cell because the product price is less than $500. By the way, all of the data you see in this G-sheet has been automatically imported from Airtable using Calpera.io. The tool basically pulls your data on a schedule with no coding skills required, which I absolutely love. I will put the link somewhere above as well as in the description box below. Coupler has literally saved me tons of time, so make sure to check that out. We can also evaluate multiple conditions by either nesting the if functions or using an alternative as function. We will start with the first one. Nesting is basically embedding one if function inside of another, placing the inner function where the false arguments would appear. We pass a result directly to the outer function. By their nature, nested if formulas can be hard to read. So, in order to easier navigate through the syntax, we'll be adding some line breaks inside the formula to line up the tests and results. This is called an indentation. Moving on to our example, let's find out the packaging size depending on the weight of the parcel. Less than 2 kilos is categorized as a small package, from 2 to 6 kilos as medium, and those heavier than 6 kilos are considered large. Select the cell equals if, open the parentheses, Refer to a cell over here, less than 2 or equals 2, comma, now enclose small in double quotes for the true value, comma, then insert a line break using Alt-Enter shortcut, add two spaces and enter the new if function as our second argument. Open the parenthesis. Here we start our logical expression. The cell value greater than 2 closing the parenthesis, multiplied by the cell value less than or equal to 6 and close in parenthesis, comma. Now, as a true result for this more complex logic expression, we enclose the word medium in quotes. And finally, when none of those conditions are met, we want the formula to return large, since that would be the only leftover option in our case. Close the parenthesis, Hit enter. So 1.2 is apparently less than 2, making it a small parcel. And that means what we've just entered works correctly. Having checked that, we can now go ahead and autofill the rest of the cells in this column. To evaluate multiple conditions without numerous nested if statements, we'll be using the ifs function. It allows shorter, easier to read formulas. The ifs function runs multiple tests and returns a value corresponding to the first true result. So it may contain multiple paired arguments, the conditions to test, along with their true values. The main difference between the if and ifs functions is that the ifs returns true values only. It simply doesn't have that false value. And as soon as there is a true value, it will not keep testing through all of the subsequent conditions. Now let's get back to our case. Here we need to get a delivery rate dependent on the weight and delivery type. For the domestic shipping, the delivery would be free. International delivery of a package under 2 kilos will cost $10, under 6 kilos $15, and heavier than that $20. In this case, it is crucial to place our arguments in a correct order, because the ifs function returns the very first value that turns out to be true. So we'll be going from the lowest value to the highest one. Otherwise, if we start off with under 6 kilos, we will eventually get $15 for all those cells that meet this condition, including the packages under 2 kilos, and that is not what we want. Refer to the cell right here equals if as, open the parenthesis, now we are starting with our first pair of arguments, refer to the cell equals domestic comma and zero as a return value. Comma. Next, we'll be setting the second logical expression to meet two conditions at the same time, so we are going to multiply both of them. This cell equals international, an asterisk. Now, if that one is less than or equals to, comma, the return value would be 10 here. Comma. And moving forward to enter the third pair of arguments, it's quite similar to the last one. The same cell reference equals international, asterisk, that one greater than 2, asterisk, this one less than 6, comma, the return value would be 15, 
close the parentheses and hit enter. You can see that we are getting an error message here, that is because the ifs function doesn't have an else value, that would allow us to leave those blank if none of the conditions were met. No worries, there are a few ways to fix this issue. We can enter the fourth pair of arguments for the large package in size, or just specify the default result by entering true as a final test. This will return a value when no other conditions are met. So let's add this test to our formula. Comma, true, comma, 20. Drag the new formula down the column. And voila! Now we only have correct values in our cells. Again, I want to remind how important it is to place all of your arguments in the right order. The if function doesn't support wildcards, but you can combine the search and isNumber functions to create a logical test. It works because the search function actually does support wildcard characters. In our dataset, we have a column with the product codes. The last character in each cell value defines whether the product is fragile or not. The codes ending with F stand for fragile. Now I want to put a check mark in front of all of the fragile items. For that, I'll be entering the if function first. Open the parentheses, is number, once again, search, another parentheses. What we're searching for is any value that contains F, so we enclose F in double quotes. And then, just where we're looking for, it will be the reference to our cell, close the parenthesis, and now we enter the true result for the isNumber function. And since we normally don't have the checkmark sign on a keyboard, we will use the char function that returns a character when given a valid character code. The up-to-date codes could be found online at the Unicode website, and I will make sure to link it in the description box below. In our case, we enter char Open the parentheses, type 10003, close the parentheses. If the result of the isNumber function is false, we want to get an empty cell. So we just open and close the double quotes with no values in between. Hit enter, and you see this code containing F, and we've got the check mark here. So the function works properly. And I'm just applying the same formula to the rest of the cells. Let's review another useful yet non-standard approach to using the if function. To find the final shipping cost, we need to combine taxes and delivery rates. First, let's use the every formula that outputs a range of cells. It is quite convenient, dynamic, and also expandable, but we will talk about every formula specifically in one of our next videos, so make sure to subscribe and hit that bell button so we will keep you posted. Now back to our dataset, I'm typing equals Array formula, open the parentheses, mention the cell reference and the ratio sign and column reference, plus the second range, close the parentheses. Now apply this formula to the rest of our cells. Now we see our formula returns the results for every cell in our column, even for those that are actually blank. Working with larger datasets, this may not only be time-consuming, but also decrease your spreadsheet performance. And here is how we fix that. Equals, every formula, open the parenthesis, if, another parenthesis. Now we enter our first argument, another land function, which removes extra blank cells returned by every formula, parenthesis, our range, Close the parenthesis equals zero. This way we are testing whether the cell is blank. For the true value, we are adding the quotes with nothing in between. The false value will be the formula, this range, plus the range from here, and close the parenthesis. This way, we not only save time whenever the range we refer to gets updated in the future, but also optimize our spreadsheet performance as well as keeping our dataset nice and clean. Let's quickly sum up what we've just learned. The if function returns one value if the logical expression is true and another if it is false. 
You may extend your test with the OR logic to meet any of the given conditions or with the N logic to meet all of those at the same time. You may also use other formulas as your if function arguments. The if function doesn't support wildcard characters, yet there is a workaround, such as combining it with the search and these number functions for a partial match. Should you want to evaluate multiple conditions, it is possible by either nesting several if functions one inside of another or using an alternate ifs function. The ifs function returns a value corresponding to the first true result. At the same time, it will not return any values when the test result is false. Yes, we know the if function is not the simplest one, and hope that this video helped you understand the logic behind it and got you covered at work, or maybe it's cool. By the way, don't hesitate to share your own experience using the if function in the comment section below. That is it for today, guys! Thank you for watching and staying with us up to this point. As a bonus, I've prepared the demo spreadsheet where you can find all of the examples used in this video, so make sure to check the link in the description box. If you found this helpful and learned something new today, give us a huge thumbs up and don't hesitate to share your thoughts in the comment section below. To see more Dishes tutorials from Railsware Product Academy, subscribe to our channel and make sure to hit the bell button to get notified on our new videos. See you in our next one!